All right, so in the last video, we derived these four equations, and I did all the work. So I'm going to get rid of the work now, because what I want to do is kind of talk to you a little bit about each of these equations, all right, each of these graphs. And what we're going to do is identify some important features of these, OK? So the first thing we're going to mention is the name. This is linear. The equation, the general equation for the parent function is y equals x. Now, the shape of this, of course, is just a straight line. Okay, now a couple of the other things that we want to look at are x-intercept. Okay, now the x-intercept is the point on the line that the line passes through the x-axis. And the x-axis is right here. And you can see it's passing through right there at 0, 0. And so in this case, the x-intercept is 0, 0. You'll notice this for a lot of these parent functions. Okay, now the y-intercept then is the location, the point, where the line passes through the y-axis. And note again, it's a point, And again, it passes through the y-axis at 0, 0. So these are some important points. Okay. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about is any special features of the graph. Okay. So the special feature of the linear graph is that it has a constant slope. It is the only type of function out of all the functions in the universe that has a constant slope. All right, which means that it has exactly the same direction, the same angle, the whole time. Notice that quadratic is always changing slope, as is the exponential here. And absolute value changes once, right there at the bottom. So the linear is the only one that has a straight up constant slope. Okay? The last two things we want to talk about are domain and range. Now I'm going to talk about domain first. Domain are the x values that exist for this function. Essentially, what am I allowed to put in for x? and still get an answer out for y. And you'll realize that you can put anything in for x. You can keep on, the graph keeps on going to the right, and it keeps on going to the left forever and ever. We're not paying attention to the up and down, just the right and left. And so the domain goes up to positive infinity, and it goes down to negative infinity. So one way to write this is to say that x is bigger than negative infinity, because it's anything above that, and less than infinity. Note that we don't put the line, because infinity is not really a number. It's more of an idea. So it can't actually be equal to infinity. It's not a number. And a way, another way to say this is that x is all real numbers, Okay, which means that x can be any of the real numbers. It, it can't be all numbers, because it can't be imaginary numbers here. And we're not going to worry about imaginary numbers this year. But I just want you to know that there are such things that don't work in the linear graph, just so that when you get to Algebra 2, you're not like, Mr. Bauer, he lied to me. It's not all numbers. It's all real numbers. And there's one other way to write this, which I presented in class, which is like this, where this symbol right here that looks kind of like an E means is of the set of. And then the R with the two parallel lines is real numbers. So this is x is of the set of real numbers. Range. Similarly, goes up and up forever and down and down forever, which means that for the range, y is of the set of real numbers. Again, you could say y is all real numbers, and you could put the y in between the negative infinity and the infinity, and that would be fine too. All right, let's move on to the quadratic and see if we can talk about these same things. We already got the name, which is quadratic. This is your general function for the parent function, y equals x squared. Okay, the next thing that we're going to add in is the shape. The shape is a U shape, which has a special name. It's called the parabola. And you do need to know that word, parabola, all right? which in essence is the U shape. Okay. Please remember that it is curved down here at the bottom. It's not pointed like the absolute value is. All right. Um, we can still get the other things, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And note that, again, it touches the x-axis right down there. Here's the x-axis. It touches it right at 0, 0. And in fact, that's the same point where it crosses the y-axis right there at 0, 0. So again, the x-intercept is 0, 0. And the y-intercept is 0, 0. OK? And then our special features for the linear graph was the constant slope. This one actually has two special features. All right? Um, it has this point down here at the bottom the 0, 0, which is the x-intercept and y-intercept. But it, that's also where it stops going down and starts going up. That's called the vertex. Okay, So there is a vertex. It doesn't have to be the same as the x-intercept and y-intercept, though sometimes it is. And there's one other thing. 
there's a line that actually goes straight down through the middle of your graph that acts as a mirror. In math, we call that being symmetric, that the things on this side are exactly like the things on that side. It doesn't have to go down the y-axis like it does here, but for the parent function, it does. And so that's called our axis of symmetry. And that axis can occur anywhere. It can be over on the side or something like that. But for a quadratic parabola, it will always be a vertical line cutting the graph in half. OK, domain. Note again that the graph does keep on going to the right. It is pointing up, but it's pointing up to the right. So it'll keep on going to the right forever and ever and to the left forever and ever. And so the domain is x is all real numbers. OK, now the range is going to be a little bit different this time. Note that the graph goes down to 0, but it never goes down below 0. So 0 is the lowest that my graph can go. Of course, it does keep on going up and up forever, so I'm going to do that. And so y is going to be between 0 and infinity. Of course, it can't include the infinity. It'll just be less. But the 0 can be included, because that point 0, 0 is the lowest point, and the y value of 0 does exist. So in this case, we're going to say y is bigger than or equal to 0. All right, so we've talked again about all the important points of a quadratic. Let's move on to absolute value, which is also called the modulus. Okay, this one we're going to simply call a V shape. Here's our formula y is absolute value of x. We'll just simply call this the V shape. Okay, no special name there, but just note that it's a V, it's not curved like the quadratic. Okay, we've got the x intercept and y intercept, which, as you can see again, occurs right there at 0, 0 for both the x and y axes. So again, we got 0, 0. Now don't get hung up on that because it's about to change. Everything's about to change. OK, our special features, again, are very similar to that of the quadratic. We do have a vertex where it changes direction. And that vertex, once again, goes through the axis of symmetry, which is going straight down the middle here. All right. So you've got the same thing as with the quadratic. Note, however, that the absolute value is linear on each side. Linear on each side of the axis of symmetry. Now note that in both these situations, the axis of symmetry went right through the vertex. That will always be the case. Axis of symmetry always goes straight through the vertex. That's your changing point. And the thing with absolute value is it is linear on each side, which means there's one constant slope there, or one constant direction. And then there's one constant direction on the other side. And these are actually reflections of each other through that axis of symmetry. OK, the domain. Hopefully you're starting to catch on to this now. Note that it goes to the right, and it keeps going to the right, and it keeps going to the left. So again, x is all real numbers, or x is of the set of real numbers. Again, you can write these any of those three ways that we had up there at the top for linear. Put it between the infinities. You can say x is all real numbers. Write it out. Whatever's fine. And then we go range. And this time again, y is not all real numbers because, again, it stops here at 0. It includes that point of 0, 0, but it stays above that the rest of the time. So again, we're going from 0 to infinity. It can't include infinity, but it is including 0. All right, so last one, we, we're on to exponential, which is a different kind of beast. All right, so for the exponential here, we're going to consider the same things. We don't really have a special name for this. Sometimes they call it an L shape. I like to call it the hockey stick. It looks more like a hockey stick than an L to me because it doesn't ever go vertically like an L does. And so L is kind of uh, a misnomer because it doesn't ever go vertically like, the, like an L does, a backwards L, I guess. But it doesn't ever do that. So I wouldn't call it an L shape. I'd call it a hockey stick just to show that it does keep going up kind of an angle like this, like, like a hockey stick does, kind of like that. More like that. Anyway, so then we've got our x-intercept and y-intercept. Now, this kind of goes along with this special feature. The y-intercept is easy enough to pick out, right? Right there. Bloop, bloop. 
there's where it crosses the y-axis at 0 comma 1 okay so we'll go ahead and have that one 0 comma 1 but the x-intercept is a little bit more difficult to work with now all three groups in class managed to do this correctly and they recognize that this line actually isn't ever going to reach the x-axis right if you think about it and we talked about this in the last video if you have two to some really big power I did a hundred last time let's do a thousand this time that's equal to 1 over 2 to the 1,000 power, which isn't 0. It gets really close to 0. It's going to be point zero 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 something, right? And so it's getting really close to 0, but it's not. It doesn't ever quite get to 0. No matter how negative this gets, negative 1 billion is going to be 2 over 1 billion. It's never going to become a negative number. And so therefore, if it never cross, if it never goes across there, it actually doesn't have an x-intercept. Now that won't be true for all exponentials because you can shift that graph down and then it will cross the x-axis. But for the most part, this one right here, the parent function at least, will not have an x-intercept. Now because of that it has a special feature which we call an asymptote. And this is very important. You need to know this word and you need to know what it is. The asymptote is on the number that we're getting closer and closer and closer to, but won't ever reach. And you're going to need to draw in this asymptote. You need to find out what number we're getting closer and closer to without ever actually getting to it. Right? 2 over 1, 1 over 2 to the 1,000 is getting really close to 0. 1 over 2 to the 1 million is getting even closer to zero and so you could, should be able to figure out that that's what's happening is we're getting closer and closer to zero so here we have an asymptote at y equals zero and you need to be able to identify that that the y value of zero will never exist no matter what you put in for x you're going to get closer and closer to zero but we we'll never ever get there now this leaves us some interesting things for domain and range note that this one is not symmetric Okay, it doesn't have a vertex because it's always, always going the same direction. Like as we go from left to right, it's always, always, always going up. It never changes direction and starts going down. If you go from right to left, it's always, always, always going down. It never, ever will start going up. So there's no vertex. Domain, of course, it can have whatever x value you want. It keeps going up to the right. It keeps going to the left. Again, x is all real numbers. The range, however, doesn't ever get down to zero. It can keep going up and up forever, so we got our infinity. But on the left-hand side, it doesn't ever get to zero. It's going to get really dang close, but it's never going to be there. So it's going to be less than infinity, because it can't equal infinity. And in this case, it's actually going to be greater than zero. Note on the other ones, it was greater than or equal to. And the reason for that was because there was actually a point at y equals zero. With this one, the y value never actually gets down to zero. It just gets really, really close to it. So there you go. We've, uh, we've now identified the name, the equation, the shape, the x-intercept, y-intercept, the special features, the domain and range of each of these four things. These are things that need to be second nature to you so that as we start to move the, them around and we're not looking at parent functions, we're looking at the transformations of those, you need to be able to take these points and move them around and deal with it. So part of your homework tonight is to essentially recreate this and pay attention to those special points. Please, please, please make sure that you can get the five central points with very, very little time. I would expect these, five, these four graphs you should be able to recreate in five minutes or less. No problem. Okay? So you will have a concept check about that soon, but for now, just make sure you learn them.